Traders, how are you with Marcello? Today we're doing the recap of what happened in the markets last week. And now it is 2024. Happy New Year. Let's get started. So we had a very unusual situation this week in that basically stocks just melted completely up. There's a there's a whole dynamic now where there's a, a very big expectation that the central bank of the United States is going to drop rates. The Powell, which is the chairman of the, the Federal Reserve, which is the central bank of the U.S., said that they're most likely going to go ahead and drop the rates. And if you don't know how this works, basically we live in a, a consumer-driven society, right? Capitalism. So the majority of the economy in the United States, or about 70, 70% of the actual economy is people going out and buying stuff. When the interest rates are higher, it's a lot more expensive to buy stuff. Basically that simple. You can see that now with the cost of, you know, houses and cars and, and you know, the the interest on your credit cards, which are variable interest rates, if they raise the rates in the United States, the central bank, the, the, the credit cards raise the rates as well. And so once they start dropping the rates, everything is going to become a lot more affordable and then everybody can start buying stuff again. Basically, that's the, the overall gist of what happened this week. The markets were closed on Monday for Christmas, so Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to everybody. The stocks in the United States were mostly positive. Canada was also positive as well. The S&P 500 ended the year with the strongest rally since 2004. And the NASDAQ had its best year since 1999. And three highest performing stocks, NVIDIA 241% positive. If you don't know, NVIDIA actually makes the AI chips, the, the, they have the biggest market share. One of the things I found very interesting is that NVIDIA is using AI to improve the chips that they're gonna use for AI, which is really funny. Meta, which is Facebook, went up 197%, and Tesla went up 105% again, and now Elon Musk is again the richest man in the world at 200 and bajillion dollars. Number two, if I'm not mistaken, is the gentleman that owns the luxury good makers out of France. Uh, I think his name is Ha Ha, something along those lines. The experts say that a new uh, C strain, uh, I don't want to say the word, but the, you know, the, the, the thing in your arm, that, that, that virus, says that we're going to have a new strain that's going to cause a global heart failure pandemic. Now, I find it a little unusual that the side effect of the things in your arm are heart attacks as well. So I wonder what it could be. I, I hopefully, hopefully they put the, the conspiracy theory Marcello there in the middle. Study finds also that the, the thing in your arm independently is associated with long, uh, long C, C word syndrome. I hope you guys know what the C word means. And also a study found that 158,000 more Americans died this year than what was expected. 35 to 44 year olds, the, there was an increase of 26%. And 25 to 34 year olds was 19% above the average. I wonder what it could be. Global warming news, the 1% are responsible for 50% of the global emissions. So you keep eating bugs to save the environment so they can keep flying in their private jets to the global warming meetings because the meetings are important. And of course they eat meat at those meetings too, just in case you didn't know. Overseas market news, the world index, which is called MSCI, surged 22% in 2023 to date. European markets are mostly mixed. Looking at the numbers here, uh, the FTSE in London was the biggest winner. Latin America was mostly higher. My dear Colombia was the biggest winner there. And then in Africa and the Middle East, mostly positive. Saudi Arabia was the biggest winner. And then in the far, far east, uh, mixed markets, but the biggest winner was the Hang Seng in Hong Kong. Bitcoin and crypto news. The Binance founder CZ net worth increased by $24 billion in 2023. Crime pays. And if you guys didn't see also that the Department of Justice also decided not to go after the 
political donations that were made by the the disgraced the former founder of FTX, Sang Benman Freed, because most of those donations went to the left, and you know they always get a pass. Crypto mining stocks in the, some biggest gains in 2023. Uh, Bitcoin, uh, there's Marathon Digital went up at 600%. Reop platforms went up 350%. And uh, Bitcoin is down for the week, 2.66% at just under 42,500. Commodities, US, Brazil, and Guyana is pumping crude at a record pace. Uh, there's a situation now where since the economy isn't doing as well, China, the demand is going down quite a bit, but there's still going to be an expectation of an increase in consumption in 2024. And because Brazil, Guyana, and also United States are are just, you know, getting the stuff out of granite at a record pace, they're expecting that they're going to be able to cover just the excess with those three countries. Guyana, if you didn't know, is the country right next to Venezuela, not Colombia side, but the other side. Portland poop crisis in the Communist Republic of Washington in the United States. There's a there's a bacteria outbreak now that only this bacteria normally only appears in sub-Saharan Africa and also southern Africa. There's a <laughs> there's a situation <laughs> there's a situation where they just leave it on the streets and they don't pick it up and unfortunately that causes a lot of bacteria outbreaks. U.S. crude down for the week, 2.66%, 71.65. International went down 2.65% to 77.04. And on the really bad news when it comes to the food prices, cacao, which is basically the, the fruit that they make chocolate out of, they are at the highest level, the prices since 1978. Another thing that's happening as well is that the butter that goes into the chocolate, which is about 20% or so of the actual chocolate when they make it, they those prices are soaring as well. So the candy prices alone in December went up by 13%. But remember, the inflation is only 3%. That's what the government, because the government would never lie to us. Cost of the grain that feeds the world is at a 15-year high and in the Thailand's Stock exchange, the rice index hit the the uh, highest price in the last few years. It's up 50% since 2022. And after Costco started selling gold bars, now Walmart is going to start selling gold bars. In the third semester, Costco was able to sell $100 million worth of the metal. And one of the things that I find really interesting, what I always tell you guys, don't pay attention to what they do. It's the opposite. Don't pay attention to what they say, pay attention to what they do. Now, why would Costco and Walmart start selling gold all of a sudden? And why would people want to buy gold all of a sudden? Huh. Gold prices in 2023 surged as a lot of people started to go into the metal due to the geopolitical risk, since it is technically a safe haven. The... Since now we have a situation that there's a huge expectation that the bank, the central bank of the United States is going to start dropping rates. That means that everybody's going to plow into silver and gold and other things that are listed in dollars because the value of the dollar is going to go down. Gold for the week went up 0.50% to 206320 This year, 2023, it did hit a new record high at 2135.50. And silver for the week went down 1.34% to 2388. Financial and banking news, the yuan, which is the currency from China, has over has eclipsed the yen for the fourth most used around the world. The United States dollar is still number one at over 47%. The euro is at about 23%. And then the, the British uh, currency is at 7.15%. Banks this year terminated 60,000 workers in one of the worst years since 2008 for the banking industry. They also have $684 billion worth of losses that are registered on the books. This is as of the third quarter in 2023. And if you kind of don't know how this happens, because of the flush of cash that we had during what happened, oh, I said it, Ugh. <laughs> during the pandemic, they took all that cash and they deposited it into treasury bonds. Well, now that the interest rates exploded to the upside, the value of those bonds have crashed, and now they're literally sitting ducks since they haven't cashed out the positions. Technically, they haven't taken the losses yet, but this is a very bad situation. 
The 44% of all single family homes purchased in 2023 were purchased by private equity funds. Because remember, by 2030, as the WEF says, the World Economic Forum, you're going to own nothing and you're going to be happy. Have fun eating your bugs. And Ethiopia, Africa's second largest populous country, defaults it on a loan. So they're going to officially go into bankruptcy due to the pandemic. They aren't able to get their finances pro properly. And Singapore inflation down to 3.6%. U.S. home prices went up 4.8% nationally. And the 36, the 30-year mortgage went down to 6.7%, uh, uh, 6 went down quite a bit. Really interesting what will happen this year, I think, in regards to the housing prices due to the fact that if the Federal Reserve decides to start actually dropping the rates, that means that the demand for houses is going to go up quite a bit because people have been on the sidelines because it's been so expensive to buy a home. It's going to be really interesting. That's about 17% or so of the economy. Remember, 70%, almost 70% is consumer spending. Out on another 17%, that's about that's the housing market. And then the rest are, are, are other things. U.S. index declined on Wednesday to its lowest level since July 27th. The dollar against most currency took a big, big crash. And home prices in Hong Kong have slumped to the 2017 levels due to the fact that everybody seems like they don't have any money, more to, money anymore to buy a home. Political news, there's a second state now that wants to take Trump off the ballot. Maine Secretary of State Shenna Bellows ruled that Trump is constitutionally ineligible for the primary ballot. This is all while, and I always try to be apolitical when I do these videos, right? But uh, there, was, there wasn't a judge at any point in time that said Trump was guilty. Whether you hate him or love him, I think we can both agree that the rule of law should apply to everybody, right? Well, if he hasn't been found guilty of an insurrection, right, in a court of law by the Department of Justice, then why are they taking them off the ballot? U.S. Muslim leaders said on Saturday that they're going to go national with a a to try to dissuade voters to not reelect Biden due to the, according to them, the bad situation that he's done with the situation in Gaza and not being able to get a peace agreement. And in economic news, 20% of Singapore's economy is manufacturing and it's the largest sector in the country and that sector rose just one percent in november if you guys don't know about the economic uh flourishing of what happened to singapore they were a fishing village literally in 1940s 1950s and now in one generation they're one of the richest countries in the world the country of singapore actually has two sovereign state funds meaning two funds that the country has and they're both in the top 10 really impressive and initial filings for U.S. unemployment benefits went up by just a touch above estimates. Corporate News and Apple uh, retracted the ban on the importation of the watches from Apple. So now they're going to be able to buy your Apple Watch again. You should probably do it before it gets banned again. And Thursday, Xiaomi, which is the cell phone company out of China, decided to launch a new electric vehicle to compete in the Chinese market with Tesla and Porsche. They invested $1.4 billion into the vehicle and it's going to start selling in the next few months. The U.S. sales, uh, the beer sales in the United States went down to a 25-year low. If you guys remember the situation with Mulvaney, there was a, a trans, I, I don't know how you say it, it's a trans woman, I think it is. And they, they, be, they gave the beer cans with the image of all these influencers and so she got famous because uh you know she was showing the can with her name on it and everything and all the people who drunk beer uh um the the bud light they didn't like it very much so that's part of the problem but also another thing is that the gen z and also millennials just don't drink as much beer anymore as the the adults Microsoft is buying over a thousand acres of farmland in Wisconsin. It's going to cost it $176 million and is planning to buy a new data center. I still find it really weird that Bill Gates owns, is the biggest owner of farmland in the, in the entire U.S. And in trade news, the world's second largest container company, Maersk, decided to continue shipping the containers through the Red Sea. But today, when I'm recording this video, they literally got hit by a missile, so they're not going to be doing that anymore. That could add to the inflation problems because now instead of cutting short through the Suez Canal, they have to go all the way around Africa to be able to get to Europe. 
technology, TikTok, very unusually is demanding users enter their iPhone passwords to view content on the phones and your car is storing your text messages when you're renting a car or you're driving around your own car the text messages when you connect it via Bluetooth and Android Auto or you know the iPhone system that actually stores it in the car and the police can have access to those text messages at any point in time T-Mobile is starting to fine customers $500 for hate messages and in interesting facts, there was an archaeological discovery that uh, was found in one of the Greek islands that found that the Greek people may have been on the islands from 3.3 million years ago to 300,000 years ago, which completely is going to rewrite the history. And if you haven't seen the Graham Hancock series, Ancient Apocalypse on Netflix, I highly recommend it. It's very good. That's the news for this week, guys. Let me know if you guys have any questions. Happy New Year, and we'll see you next time.